last semester and, and also some good subjects also there. Good. Okay. Okay, we'll uh, we'll pray and get started. Okay, let's uh, let's pray. Father, we we just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this uh, Lord, beginning of this semester, God. Lord, we we thank you for what's in store for us, Lord. What you have in store for each one of us, Lord. I especially come at this class to your mighty hands, Father God. We thank you for being with them, for leading them, Lord. All these years, Lord. Um, these three years, Father God, um, and uh, even as they've come to the end of this third year, Lord, um, we just pray that, um, Lord, that you'll continue to pour out your spirit upon them. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to write your word on their hearts. Father God, I pray, pray Lord, the plans and purposes that you have for each of them, Lord, um, in the next season, Master, I pray for, we pray for clarity, we pray for Lord, your leading, oh God, Lord, even as they immerse themselves, Lord, in your word, and uh, Lord, even as they give themselves, Lord, totally to the work of your spirit, to the leading of your spirit, oh God, I pray that you would empower them greatly. I pray that, uh, Lord, um, that you would, Lord, draw them to your to yourself, Lord, and uh, I pray, Lord, even as your word says that uh, when we call on call unto you, Lord, that you will show us great and wonderful things that we do not know. And so, God, this morning we call uh, upon your name, we call unto you, God. I pray that uh, this semester, that will be a, Lord, a season of, uh, Lord, revelation. It will be a season of, um, Lord, opening our eyes and uh, opening our spiritual ears and, and receiving from you, Lord. And I just pray, Father God, that uh, you will also grow as... Uh, Lord, as ministers of the gospel, that we will, even as we receive, Father God, that we will also give out, Lord, that I pray that each one of us, God, that you will raise us up and you will, in the places where you have placed us and, um, and that you will use us as dispensers, Lord, of the aroma of Christ in every place. We thank you. We give you all the praise and give you all the glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, so this uh, semester we are going to be looking at uh, a GEPCT. Um, so that's Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Thessalonians, right? First and Second Thessalonians. So um, it's actually um, six books, uh, six episodes. Um, uh, of course, we're going to look at uh, uh, Thessalonians as as one episode, and um, yeah, we're going to be looking at. Uh, uh, I mean, as as one um, module, but of course it's two episodes, right? So uh, we'll start with Galatians and the notes I have uploaded, uh, so you can you can download that, you can take a look at it, uh, and you can keep it open, even as we go through the class. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's begin. Let me uh, just start off with um, yeah. So when we look at the book of Galatians. Um, you know, what comes to our mind is uh, Paul's strong words, right? strong words for the church in Galatia. And um, he he has a very strong things, very stern words, right? He uses words like, you foolish Galatians, right? who has bewitched you? And, uh, you know, like that. Uh, so uh, that comes to our mind immediately. Right? But also we see that, um, you know, and some strong, um, um, uh, strong instructions. You know, like he, he also um, rebukes them. He's, he says things like, you know, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Obey the truth. And also some very strong words like, um, uh, you know, if anyone preaches another gospel, you know, let let them be, uh, let them be accursed. Right. So. So we see that uh, it um, uh, he addresses some very st uh, strong issues here, some um, some problems that were there in the church in Galatia. So, uh, so he and it and it was a serious thing. So he he, he addresses that. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at some the background of uh, uh, if you look at the background of the the place the the people. Right. We when we when we read Acts chapter sixteen, um, we we see um, mention of uh, Galatia, right? Acts chapter sixteen and verse six. Um, 
Yeah, so it says uh, Acts chapter 16 and verse 6. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Right? So, so uh, this happens after Paul goes to, uh, in his uh, second missionary journey, right? he goes to uh, Derby, Lystra, and that's where he um, meets um, uh, Timothy. Right? And so Paul and Silas, they're traveling and they meet, uh, and Timothy is also taken as part of the team. And uh, he gets Timothy's, um, uh, gets him circumcised uh, because of the Jews and because he's going to be meeting a lot of Jews or going into synagogues and so on. So, and then, you know, he uh, goes on with this journey and then he comes to this region. So, um, so they, he would have preached, he would have ministered uh, around this time in the region of Galatia. Okay, so, um, so that is something that we see. And also uh, in chapter 18, verse 23, you know, Acts chapter 18 and verse 23, uh, here also we see um, uh, Galatia being mentioned. So it, it says, after he had spent some time there, he departed, uh, that is from Antioch, he departed from Antioch and went over to the region of Galatia and Phrygia, in order strengthening all the uh, disciples okay so um, so this this is something that we see mentioned uh, about paul's ministry in this region uh, of galatia okay so um so th when we look at uh, the background of the people okay um let me just uh, let me just project the notes here just one second Okay. Right. You hope you can see that. Okay. So when you see the uh, background of the people, we see that uh, they um, they were actually known as the Celts or the Gaul, Gaul, Gauls. They invaded Macedonia, and uh, and they came to be known as gallo grecians Okay. Um, so from which. The word Galatians originates, and also uh, we see that this region, okay, Antioch in Pisidia. Uh, there are two Antiochs, right? One in Syria, the one in Pisidia. Uh, so the Antioch in Pisidia, Lystra, Iconium, Derby. So this uh, region we see um, as uh, mentioned as uh, Galatia. Okay, so that's um, that's what we see here. Okay. Right. So, what? When was it written? Okay, it's uh, maybe after AD forty nine, and sometimes historians also say that it could be AD fifty. Um, so, around this time, AD forty nine, fifty, and uh, he he writes um, this particular epistle to this region, right, to the churches in this region, and. Uh, uh, the, the the thing is this that it could probably be um before the Jerusalem council you know if you remember, remember in acts chapter 15 we read about uh, the Jerusalem council where the apostles uh, the other the disciples also meet there in Jerusalem to address an issue of um, uh, address a issue of uh, uh, this teaching which was uh, prevalent. What was this teaching? The teaching was that, okay, one has to become circumcised in order to, um, and also follow the law of Moses, the customs of Moses, um, in order to be saved, right? So this was something that was uh, doing the rounds. And so people meet and then they share their experiences um, and, uh, and then, uh, Paul and Barnabas are there. They they talk to them. They talk to the people about how um, God has worked uh, in all these uh, Gentile churches um, and so on, and how they've received Christ. So, and then the council actually decides. Okay, they say that fine. You know, we we, we need not. We should not actually put this burden of people um, 
following the law, it's actually false. You know, like we we should not, in order to be saved, that people uh, need not actually follow the law, and because it's salvation is by grace through faith. So um, they talk about that, and they also talk about uh, you know. Uh, 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 certain things, you know, like food offered to idols and all those things that people should avoid, and uh, and then they write a letter. So, um, so probably it was before this uh, that Paul writes this letter to the Galatians because um, he, you know, if you look at Galatians, the first couple of chapters, he talks about how many times he went to Jerusalem and what he actually um, accomplished or whom he met in great detail. Okay, so uh, we see that here uh, uh, he does not actually mention about this Jerusalem Council. So probably it, this Jerusalem Council happened after that. Okay, um, or uh, uh, you know, oh, sorry, he wrote the letter to uh, the Galatians before that. Anyway, so we we're not very sure, right? So. Um, so, so that is uh, something that we see here. Okay, and from where did he write the uh, epistle to the Galatians? Well, he probably um, you know wrote it either from uh, the Antioch of Syria or Ephesus, or, or maybe on his way to Jerusalem. So that also is not very very conclusive. Okay, so that is what we see here. Okay, so let's look into. Um, the um, first chapter, let's read through the first chapter and and then go verse by verse. Okay. okay. So let's um, let's read the first few verses of uh, Galatians, first chapter. Right? Okay, Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, verse 6. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so I, now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Okay. So verse 1, uh, Paul very clearly says, uh, An apostle, not from men, nor through man but through jesus christ and god the father who raised him from the dead so uh, paul is uh, talking about his apostleship and how he became an apostle so he says it's it's not through men no it's not through uh, somebody's uh, uh, not through uh, you know some uh, it was not through natural means it's not because somebody invited him somebody spoke to him and told him yes you you know this is who we were and uh, it's uh, it's definitely not from any of that but he says the call was from the lord jesus right but through jesus christ and god the father who raised him from the dead okay so uh, here also is declaring that um, about the risen lord the reality of the risen lord the risen lord is the one so it's not some historical jesus it's not uh, a jesus who was uh, you know it's not talking about the jesus who was who spent some time who was a good man and he he died and is no more you know he, he's not talking about that but he's saying that this risen lord and right, he's the one who called right and and uh, and God the Father through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So the reality of resurrection and the reality of um, the call 
uh, the, uh, to be the apostle which came from the risen lord okay so and and then he says and all the brethren uh, who are with me so uh, then he goes on is uh, uh, talking about his team and then in verse 2 you see and all brethren who are with me to the churches of galatia so this this region that we saw in, in the map you know, to these churches he is writing this uh, this letter right to all the churches in galatia it's not just um, you know one body one or one place but you know several places and several uh, places where people are where the churches are gathered okay verse 3 grace to you and peace from god the father and our lord jesus christ you know this is uh, we've seen before in the in corinthians that uh, you know there's a typical uh, way by which paul greeted the church and uh, and several places uh, right in all the other epistles also we see paul using this familiar greeting uh, grace to you and peace from god the father and the lord jesus christ so um, so paul was very much uh, uh, aware and uh, where he is and also had experienced the grace of god and he wanted others also to experience the same right he wanted others to experience the grace of god um and if you look at paul's life he really experienced the grace of god in a very rich manner right and of course what is the grace of god uh, you know uh, the grace of god you know we can look at it as several uh, aspects one is that it is something that we do not deserve right uh, grace something that we do not deserve it's unmerited favor uh, grace is also um, you know uh, the gifts it's a it's a gift that is given it is something that is given freely um, so that is the second aspect of it the third thing is also that grace is also divine uh, enablement or empowerment right um, it's it's um, it's some um, Uh, divine enablement which means that it comes from god uh, comes from him and it uh, grace enables us right empowers us uh, to live the way uh, he wants us to live and also grace uh, we see is uh, is a divine virtue right we divine character okay, so we see all this um, so he's saying you know may you experience this grace and walk in this grace so grace to you and peace from god the father um so uh, here uh just one second please uh and peace from god i'm just looking at the word uh, so literally it means uh, quietness and also it means uh, rest it also means um, prosperity or something um, that you thrive in uh, prosperity that you prosper in right so um paul uh, mentions all that and says okay may you need to you know i'm just uh, declaring this over you grace and peace from god the father and from the lord jesus christ and um, verse 4 we see paul mentioning about the lord who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our god and father okay so the lord jesus christ who gave himself he directly you know immediately goes on to um, uh, to talk about the purpose he's talked about the uh, you know the the purpose of the coming of christ right so immediately goes into that and this is what he did he who delivered uh that he gave himself for our sins so that was a big problem the problem of sin sin separating us from god sin taking us to a destiny away from god um and uh, sin preventing us from living a life that god wants here on earth so um so he, he says you know who gave himself for our sins the lord jesus gave himself for our sins um the reason he gave himself for us sins is this that he might deliver us that he might actually free us and uh, set us free liberate us uh, from this present evil age and and that also is the will of god okay uh, that he might deliver us from the present evil uh, age and um, the word used there eon okay from which uh, it means a time period 
right? It means an age, uh, uh, a time period. And uh, so God, the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself to deliver us from this evil time period or evil season um, that he might set us free from that, okay? Um, from the bonds of that, right? And um, according to the will of God the Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, then from verse 6, right, he, he actually goes on from verse 6, uh, that is going to be the, you know, the his actual topic, uh, and he's, he's going to address it, uh, you know, in the in the rest of the chapters also. Right? Um, so this is this was the main thing. This was the main problem. Okay, so that is what we see here, um, verse six. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from Him who called you in the grace of Christ. Okay. Uh, so he's saying, I I marvel. I'm surprised that you are turning away. And uh, and the word used there, uh, marvel, it means that uh, you know I'm, I I wonder, uh, you know, almost like uh, in admiration. I'm I, I'm wondering, you know, how did this happen? Okay, so saying I marvel that you are turning away so soon <clears throat> from this gospel of grace uh, that you're uh, that uh, from him, you know, turning away so soon. Sorry. Uh, he says, from him, from the Lord Jesus, um, who called you in the grace of Christ. Right? You are, in fact, so, so what he's saying is that when you're turning away from what was the, the truth that was preached, they are actually turning away from Christ, from the person of Christ himself. Right. Um, so let's look at uh, you know the following verses. Will 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 actually show us what they are turning away from, in what way, what did they do in their believing, uh, what did they you know what did they actually do that Paul says that you're turning away from Christ, you're actually turning away from the person of Christ. Okay. So, <clears throat> so saying um, you're turning away so soon from Him who called you in the grace of Christ. Now, this call, this invitation, uh, is is from a place of, again, from a place of grace. Right? It called you in the grace of Christ. So it is not about you, your performance. It's not about you meeting certain conditions, uh, uh, and therefore you are invited. It is not because you have achieved certain things that you are invited to this. Uh, you, know, you have been called and you are invited it's it's from uh, a place of grace you know it's not because of anything of your achievements or your performance or keeping certain things and not keeping certain things you know uh, it's not that it is to call you in the grace of Christ okay so he's saying you uh, you're turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. <clears throat> You're turning away to a, a different um, gospel. And, uh, you know, the word gospel used there, euangelion, which means uh, good news. <clears throat> So you're turning away from this good news. Um, it's just, I mean, turning away from the person, and it's a, it's a different gospel. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, verse 7, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Okay, So uh, his point is that it is not actually a, another gospel. You, know, you can't even put it in the same category uh, as the gospel of Christ. Okay, So which is, it is not another. It is, it is in fact, it is, it is not good news at all. Okay, So gospel means... Good news, and uh, so he's saying, you know, you're turning away to a different gospel in the previous verse. But then he says, in fact, it is not, um, uh, it is not another gospel. It is not another because it is not good news at all. It is nowhere in comparison to 
the, the gospel of Christ. Okay, so saying, um, there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, this is this is why they have come and preached this. And but you have actually, you are so quickly turning away and receiving the other so-called gospel uh, or so-called good news. Right. So, um, and this is this comes from those who want to trouble you, and those who want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Okay, which means uh, corrupt the gospel of Christ. Okay, so <clears throat> so he's saying that. Um, so the, this comes from a people who want to trouble you, okay, and uh, um, the, whose reason is that they want to, uh, you know, they want to agitate you, they want to trouble you. you know, it does not come from a good motive, right? So it has been given to you, it has been shared to you from those who do not, who have not shared with a good motive you know it, they want to trouble you they want to agitate you and they have brought this to you and it is not another gospel it is nowhere uh, good news and it comes from those who want to trouble you it comes from those who want to uh, whose objective is to pervert or corrupt the gospel of christ okay so so which brings us to that question so what is the gospel of christ Right, so we know that uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus, the, the good news is, it's the power of God for salvation. Right, it is, uh, it is something that is to be received. Uh, it is given in grace, which is to be received by faith. Right? It is the uh, like in Romans chapter one, we see Paul saying that it is the power of God for salvation. Right, uh, it is the power of God for salvation, and uh, let's look at that uh, verse, Romans chapter um, one. Um, and verse 16, when he says that he's not ashamed of this gospel of Christ, the good news of the Christ, uh, of Jesus Christ, and good news of this Messiah, right? It is the power of God, first of all, it is the power of God. Uh, to salvation. It is the power of God to save someone uh, for everyone who believes, and it's for all, for the Jews and for the Greeks. It is the power of God. Power of God to break the power of sin. Power of God to save, to bring a person from the clutches of sin into life. Right? It into uh, Which, which uh, brings that person into salvation. It, it is the power of God. This gospel of Christ. So he says, you know, this uh, what has been shared is in no way uh, that it is in no way compared to that. Uh, you can't even compare. Uh, and so it is. It is first of all, it is not the good news. Secondly, it is. It has been given to you um, with the wrong motive, which means that they don't. They just don't want to trouble you, and they want to corrupt the gospel of Christ. Okay. Then verse eight. Okay. So. And then this is, uh, you know, this is a uh, very powerful verse because he says, but even if we, okay, so Paul or anyone from the team, okay, even if we or an angel from heaven, okay, so we know that angels are, you know, ministering uh, spirits and they are uh, messengers, you know, we read in Hebrews uh, and they are given to uh, minister to those who inherit salvation, which is you know us believers. They they do minister. Um, but he's saying you know that even if we you know who have been ministering, suddenly if we come with a different gospel, okay, even if we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, okay. If there's any other gospel apart from this gospel of Christ that we have preached. Okay. Now, he says, the second part of it, let him be accursed or let him be brought to ruin. Okay. And that word accursed, that, uh, you know, the Greek word is anathema. Okay. Let him be separated from God. Let him, you know, so it's a very strong um, thing that he's actually wishing the other person 
right? Let him, whoever does this, let anathema, which means let him, let them be, you know, let them be separated, excommunicated, let them be, um, you know, let them be brought to ruin. Uh, so it's it, it brought, you know, in the sense, brought to destruction. So it's not, uh, it's not a very nice thing. But uh, the reason Paul says is that that news or a corrupted gospel will corrupt the person. Right? The corrupted gospel is uh, is, is able to uh, when a person receives that and lives by that, it is not the power of God. It is not the truth. Therefore. You know, it is not the power of God in operation in their lives, so they miss out on the grace of God. It is, it becomes something else. Right? So, if a person is doing that, let them be brought to destruction. Let them be doomed to destruction. Let them be separated. Let them be excommunicated. You know, uh, let them be accursed. Okay, um, and we know that a curse is a reverse blessing. Right? A blessing from God all the good things and a curse is all the negative things so he's saying you know let them let those negative things uh, be in their life and let them be separated let them be brought to discretion uh, destruction because they have you know they are troubling and they are corrupting the gospel okay so very strong uh, words so the reason uh, again is this because he believes he has experience he believes in the gospel of christ he is not ashamed of the gospel of christ he has shared the gospel of christ um, because of which you know the people who are the, the churches in galatia uh, uh, have received christ and experienced the power of god right they've experienced salvation and therefore they should not turn away he's warning them very strictly yeah, in you know, uh, he's in so uh, in very blatant terms. He's warning them, saying, "You cannot turn away from this, because when you turn away from this gospel, you are actually turning away from Christ, and you're turning away from the person of Christ. And uh, and and this is uh, this is this is a serious matter. Okay, it is uh, it you, because the, maybe the people did not realize it was such a serious matter." Maybe the church, maybe the believers did not realize that. Uh, oh, here's something that we have heard, uh, something new that we have heard. Okay, let's let's move into this, or uh, you know something. Uh, uh, you know, and so uh, so he's, he's saying, you know, it's it's a it's a very serious thing. Okay, um, verse nine again. As we have said before, so now I say again: if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be a curse. So the person, the messenger of the gospel, let them be let them be brought to ruin, brought to dis, uh, destruction. So you mentioned that twice. Right? Um, verse 10, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. So, so he's saying now, you know, in this ministry, whom do I persuade? Okay, who am I persuading? Uh, you know, with this preaching, with all this, uh, with all these, uh, you know, persecutions, with all these trials, who am I persuading? Right? Uh, I, I, I endure this, I go through this, and everywhere uh, when this gospel is preached, you know, there, there is persecution, there is uh, you know, ridicule and everything, hatred. So, you know, I'm not seeking the favor of, or I'm not seeking to please men. And I'm not saying some things just to please people. Right? It is the truth. And it, uh, and because I'm preaching the truth, you know, there is so much of persecution, there is so much of attack, there is so much of difficulties that I'm going through. Okay, so you you must you must understand that I'm still continuing to do this um, despite all this because it is the truth. Okay. The thing is this that um, um, you know when we when we he goes on to you know talk about um, uh, the, uh, the the gospel that he is preaching, the nature of the gospel that he's preaching. He's going to talk about that, but you know, but the thing is this. Now, we know from the uh, from the later chapters, that is um, chapters like uh, chapter three and so on, that 
it was a call to return to the law. The other message that the other other the Jewish people were Jewish, or Judea people who were following, uh, you know, Judaism, what they had preached to these churches, where it was actually an invitation to go back to the law, to go back to the customs, uh, traditions of the law, to go back to be circumcised, to go back to, uh, you know, keeping uh, the traditions in the law. Um, so it was an invitation to go back to that. Right now, the thing is. When the, when the gospel was preached, there was a lot of attack from the from the Jewish people. Right? Uh, wherever he went and preached, there was attack. Of course, there were there were attack, attack from the non-Jewish people, um, uh, you know, from the Gentiles who were who were actually uh, you know uh, like we read about them. They they felt that okay, their their profit was being cut off because people were people would stop going to the other places to worship but they would come to you know to the, to the living god to worship so their means of profit was actually going you know they're going off so there was attacks uh, there were attacks from uh, uh, from them also but there were also attacks from the jewish people who, who felt that their importance their prominence was slowly diminishing or would diminish if people left the synagogues if people or if people you know, uh, went on to follow the Lord Jesus. So, um, so there was a lot of attack from them. So Paul is saying, you know, am I pleasing men? Right? Um, if I still please men, then I would not be a bond servant of Christ, bond servant of um, the Lord Jesus. So the thing is that the message that he preached was not inviting people to go back to the law. Right? In fact, it is to tell them that salvation does not come by keeping all these laws but salvation okay the, the law had a purpose but salvation comes when you receive this message of grace and it is the power of god okay so that brought a lot of attack upon paul so he's saying you know uh, uh, when when the others came and preached this new message uh, saying you need to keep that as well, you need to keep all the law. Then definitely, you know, the Jewish community or the Pharisees, they they would have been pleased. Okay, uh, if for for the, with such a message, oh, here is someone who's uh, inviting people to get back to the law, get back to be circumcised, keep the law, and so on. So he's saying, you know, am I pleasing men? So that kind of a message would please man, which is what you know these people are doing. They are bringing this message, message, and you know that would please them. There, there won't be any persecution because of that message. They would not be persecuted. They would not be hunted down like I am. So he says, if I am preaching something to please man, then I would not be a bond servant of Christ. In other words, he's saying, you know. They are actually not born servants of Christ. Okay, okay. So then he's, uh, he's on to, goes on to say, um, uh, "I would not be a born." Okay, let's read from verse eleven onwards. Okay, verse eleven and uh, up to seventeen. Okay, but I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my father's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Okay, now, from 11 onwards till the end of the 
chapter and even the second chapter um uh, the uh, so paul goes on to say what kind of gospel he received and and uh, uh, how he received it and and also he goes on to talk about what happened after he received what he did after he received so we we actually get some you know very valuable information about what happened in paul's life after he uh, became a believer and then uh, and the gospel right um and the gospel that he received okay so this is what he says verse 11 i make known to you brethren that the gospel which was preached to me preached by me is not according to man so we know how paul uh, what happened uh, and we read in the book of um, book of acts what happened um and how he became a believer okay we uh, and acts chapter um Acts chapter nine, right? Acts chapter nine. We see, uh, we see that encounter that he has uh, with the Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus. Right. So, and uh, he has this encounter. He uh, with the Lord. Um, he has this. Um, uh, he meets with Ananias, and he experiences the supernatural touch of God, where his blind eyes are opened he is filled with the holy spirit and all that happens uh, soon after you know, around this time so it says um, in verse 20 of uh, acts chapter 9 immediately he preached the the christ in the synagogues that he is the son of god okay. he began to preach immediately he began to preach this is what it is he has heard the Lord Jesus speak to him, interact with him. He experienced the power of the risen Lord, you know, in in his body. His eyes were opened, physical eyes were opened. Spiritually, he could now understand and receive things. Um, he was filled with the Spirit of God. He was baptized, and so uh, all these things have happened. And so, verse twenty, we see immediately he started preaching the Christ. He preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Okay. Um, verse 22 says, Paul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Now we know that he was a, Paul was an educated man, a learned man in the scriptures, uh, and he's, he's going to talk about that also, you know, how he, uh, in Judaism, he he went far far more advanced which means he did very well he was he learned uh, the things he uh, and he advanced more than his contemporaries meaning people who were of his uh, who were being trained along with him he he excelled right in his understanding and his all that so with all that now you know something else happened right he was that spark of the holy spirit the revelation of the that brought to him by, by the Lord. Now he, he was. He began to preach that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God. Um, so he began to preach that. He began to preach the gospel. So he's saying the here verse eleven that the gospel that he started preaching, okay, um, among the Jews, is uh, you know the Acts talks about how he confounded. Confounded meaning um, they they could not say anything in return. Right? They could not argue. Um, he, they were totally, uh, in other words, they were they were totally you know dumbfounded. They, they could not say anything. His arguments were so powerful. What he was teaching, you know, probably from the Old Testament texts, right? What he was showing them and relating that to the life of Christ, probably the Old Testament prophecies and, and you know, about the birth and of Christ and everything, uh, the teaching of Christ, they could not say anything in return. Right? They're confounded. Okay? And this message, Paul says, is not according to man, um, verse 12, for I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now he spent several years training to be a Pharisee. Okay, that was going through the, you know, the texts and going through the ancient, you know, and going through all the Old Testament scriptures and being trained uh, by under Gamaliel and 
and so on right so so he was trained now this training or this understanding revelation and this training did was not through man right? this came by the revelation of the lord jesus so this was a divine revelation this was god putting that revelation in his spirit so paul just received that in his spirit and he was so convinced that he went ahead and preached it right okay so he says i neither received it from man nor was i taught it you know there was no one to teach me sit down and say okay this is what the lord jesus it was a download it came through the revelation of jesus christ this is how i received it and uh, and then he goes on to say in verse 13 you know you heard of my former conduct or my lifestyle my behavior in judaism i'm sure you must have heard of it right because you know in acts chapter 9 also it talks about how all the churches were saying hey this saul who became paul this saul who persecuted the church is now preaching the christ The, the very Christ whom he persecuted, or the very message that he was against, uh, he's preaching that message. Right. So everybody knew by reputation what kind of a person he was. Um, so he's saying, "You heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the Church of God beyond measure. Okay, it was a, you know, beyond a certain limit, it, beyond all limits." Say. i persecuted the church you know i arrested the people i troubled them i put them in prison right we read about all that in acts chapter 8 how he persecuted so i persecuted the church being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers now that was the kind of man i was exceedingly zealous very zealous for judaism very zealous as a pharisee very zealous for the old old testament teachings very zealous right um okay so we'll stop here and then we'll continue with verse 14 uh, uh, verse 14 and verse 15 right okay we'll stop here we'll take a break